Be Our Change. Positive, inspirational stories. It's the Christmas season and one new spot for locals to enjoy, Centennial Park in Midland. It's where we're bringing you this month's special show. The quintuplets born in the basin are now home doing well. Our Gian Kim introduces us to this special family. I am feeling, um, I guess the best way to word it is I'm feeling blessed. Not one, not two, but five little bundles of pure joy. It's definitely upside down right now. <laughs> we're holding it together with coffee and prayers right now. <laughs> For mothers Heather and Priscilla, it's busy times, but an answer prayer. I am just incredibly thankful for Dr. Pill for everything he did. Uh, we started in February and then found out about all the five babies. And once they were born, they uh, were in the NICU up until just recently with the first one going home at the end of um, October and the last one coming home just last week. So Medical professionals at ORMC say this rare occasion happens maybe just once in a lifetime. It's a great responsibility and, uh, you know, uh, we, we worked very hard and uh, they all made it home safe and healthy. Uh, which was my main goal, you know. Making nurses like Linda Rodriguez appreciate life a little more. It's something that you only dream about, but you never think you'll live, and then all of a sudden one day there it is. It just makes you appreciate medicine a lot more and just love your job a lot more. For the family, they're now stronger in number by five. Mother Heather Langley says the blessings seem endless as they look to the future. I have got six amazing, beautiful, healthy daughters, and I am just excited to start this next chapter of all of them being home. Congratulations to them. The babies were born back in August. Our community is showing support for a basin sandwich shop trying to keep its head above water. Recently, the owner of the sandwichery in Odessa took to social media, pleading with the community to help his business Otherwise, he would have to close his doors. The next day, the West Texas Staples saw a boom in customers it's never seen before. We were we got slammed and actually had, believe it or not, the, the, busiest, day the, the busiest day of actually in the history of the sandwichery sandwich shop. It was it was amazing, man. It was awesome. Uh, I mean, cars were just lined up out the street. There were people in here. Too bad we couldn't have it more than 50 percent because we could have filled this place over and over three or four times. The store's hours are 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. It's located on 7th and Dixie. Probably one of the most well-known people on the basin, Victoria Prince. Time and time again, you'll hear she is such a generous giver. It looks wow. probably better on the outside than it feels on the inside some days. Like so many, um, Victoria Prince's world has changed dramatically. There are so many folks within our own community that really need help. The 59-year-old sold her Midland real estate company and closed her ballroom dance studio because of COVID-19. There's no time like the present to grasp life and make today count for something. Still, her focus remains on making a difference. Many of us women are, are looking up to people like Victoria to see how it's done. There's just an inviting attitude that she has. She wants you to be a part of her world and wants to be a part of your world. Well worth the reward of dear friendships and dear people. Her passion for people, one of Victoria's many strengths. She also takes people, women like me, who are professionals, under her wing and mentors them. Victoria understands the needs and the mission that we have here, and she is she does everything she can to help us be successful. And it seems part of her success comes from all she does in our community. I think it's great if everybody can participate and give back on whatever level they're able to do. Victoria works with numerous local charities, including Senior Life Midland, and has hosted lots of fundraisers as well. We're highlighting numerous remarkable women. Meet Renee Earls. She is the CEO and president of the Odessa Chamber of Commerce, and her contributions to our community seem endless. Renee has served on numerous boards, including the United Way, 
The Medical Center Hospital Foundation and the Odessa College Foundation, to name a few. I don't think I'm remarkable. I think I'm blessed. She's all about service to people, and she walks that walk, and she encourages the rest of us. And I think just by the way she does it so selflessly, it just makes us want to step up and do the same. Along with her achievements, she's also a wife and mom and seems to juggle that effortlessly as well. Oh my God, he's fixing the shoe. Oh, get down. Mental health, a big topic here, especially after last year's mass shooting. A true test of Christy Edwards' strength responding to that tragic event. She's the CEO and executive director of Centers for Children and Families in Midland. Edwards works tirelessly to make sure everyone gets the help they need. Whenever you become involved in someone's life, it's not like you walk away and you don't ever think about them till the next time they come in your door. So, you know, you go and you try to research things that might help them, you pray for them, you know, if you're a praying third person. She makes us better versions of ourselves as professionals and as individual people. And that's who Christy is. Edwards and her team have also advocated for mental health, going to Austin to raise awareness. This next remarkable woman is helping homebound seniors. I'd like to help every elderly person in this town that needs it. For the past 25 years, Margaret Burton has been the executive director of Odessa's Meals on Wheels. The nonprofit started with 140 clients and now serves 570 Odessans. She's also a mother of three and has a long resume of community service. It includes serving as a city councilwoman and she was the second director of the Rape Crisis Center. She is the heart of the program. Um, and she gives a lot to the program. Burton wants to inspire and challenge the next generation to volunteer and make a difference. It's not just a man's profession. A local funeral home owner is breaking barriers while helping grieving families. Our Katie Orth has more. Natalie Pickle and Welch Funeral Home. This is Casey. A mother of two and a loving wife, Casey Baker gives back to her community in many ways. Family businesses do, right? She's on many boards and she helps those who can't afford a funeral. But maybe the most significant, she gives the gift of comfort and service to families hurting. This isn't just our business, this is our ministry. A third generation in her family to run and own the Nally Pickle and Welch Funeral Homes but she's the first woman. This is typically known as a male's profession. She's shaking things up. And I take a lot of pride in hiring and training women. <coughs> women have a very unique uh, quality in most cases where they're very compassionate and they put families at, at ease and help serve them in a very loving way and I think that that's what a lot of the women in our business do. And what she's doing is an inspiration to many. You know I love getting to serve and that's kind of what motivates me and gets me out of bed every day is knowing that I'm getting to make a difference. They have funeral homes in Midland, Stanton and Big Spring. I always include a scripture card and I write a handwritten note on each order. A Midland woman's new business also serving as a blessing that's next when BR Change continues. There's a new business in the basin and the goal is simple. A Midland woman is using her talent to bless others. Most of her career, Robin Wilson has been a musician. In the morning when I rise. Even serving as a worship leader. When I rise. When you're a worship leader, your job really is to prepare people's hearts for the sermon and the word of God to come. But these days, the Midland woman is preparing people's hearts in a different way. If it hadn't been for COVID, I probably would never have started this business. I really just had wanted to 
bring some hope to people around me. I am just so proud to see her, you know, at this stage in her life um, to step out and start a new business. That new business, Birdie's Bites, her specialty, delicious lemon bars, and they always come with something special inspired by her faith. I always include a scripture card and I write a handwritten note on each order. Just seeing how people have responded and um, been so supportive since she's launched her business has just been a confirmation that, um, it, you know, it really was just part of God's plan after all. Everything about this business is a blessing. It involves um, answers to prayer and things that are happening that I would have never dreamed. I think what makes the Permian Basin such a great community is that there are so many giving people out there. So focus on your talent. Be one of those giving people like Robin. Be our change. Robin and her daughter have talked about expanding Birdie's Bites in the future. They hope to add children's books to the mix using the same little bird as a character. She runs one of the biggest nonprofits in West Texas. What got her to the top? It was a struggle. It was a struggle for sure. A local gym owner encouraging other businesses to keep fighting during this pandemic. Tips to keep you fit during the holiday season. Our hope, you be inspired. Stay with us. Executive Director of the West Texas Food Bank, a great example of a leader. Our Gian Kim shows us what makes her stand out. Libby Campbell, starting out as a volunteer at the West Texas Food Bank, now runs one of the largest nonprofits in West Texas. I was able to be lucky enough to represent and be a voice for rural, rural America, rural West Texans about bringing back much needed food to our communities, but also how do we support our agriculture community? We have to do that. For those who know her best is the ease at which she simply makes things happen. The only way I can describe it is that looking at her, you just see a, a natural person doing what she is supposed to be doing. And her innate ability to lead that makes her truly remarkable. I was trying to go teach at ECISD, so I asked her for a recommendation, and she was like, absolutely not. <laughs> you need to be at the food bank. She believed in me. She believed that I was I had a server at heart. And for lifelong friend Craig Stoker, it's the decade's worth of laughter, bickering, and growth that's helped center each other. I saw her growing into a, a, a leader and a, somebody in the community to look up to and be proud of, and this is um, a joy. This is a passion. And it's a continuation of a friendship. Spearheading a historic farm bill under the guidance of Representative Mike Conaway, offering assistance to the aftermath of Hurricane Harvey and establishing a mobile disaster unit that helps food banks reach rural communities along the coast. Her dedication to feeding the hungry, winning her an advocacy award by Feeding America. For her, it's a calling she'll pass down for generations to come. I just thought that living in West Texas, being one of the most philanthropic areas probably in the country, that there was no excuse for a child not to be able to eat. The food bank special, it kind of in a way has saved my soul over a couple of different personal experiences too in my life. Campbell encourages young women to be honest, to be respectful, and to ask for respect in return. Women empowering other women right here in the basin. Girl bosses that have made their mark in the industry and of course right here in our community. The Connect Network is a mastermind group for women. It is made up of about 150 members. Many of them are located right here in West Texas. Their goal is simple, to encourage and help each other. I find that when we do come to the table and just share our hearts, it's, it's, we all really have a lot of the same feelings and um, things that motivate and inspire us. I want them to see how hard all these women are working and realize that there is a, there is a platform, there is a, there is a lane for everybody. 
and not to be scared to get up and, and go for it. The group is made up of women of all different professions and all different ages. A local gym owner encouraging other businesses to keep fighting during this pandemic. Robert Brown opened F45 Ponderosa West in May, just a few months after the pandemic started. COVID-19 stopped the Odessa Gym's grand opening from happening just six days before the big event. Brown says being a new business owner has been terrifying. Despite all the challenges, he's 180 members strong. His advice to other business owners, just keep fighting. We had the fire marshal coming by and knocking on our door and asking us how many people were in here at multiple times. And, you know, it's just, you just roll with the punches. We have a really good community here in Midland, Odessa, and they want to support local businesses. The gym continues to take numerous safety precautions to keep its staff and clients safe. The gym is hoping for a happy holiday season, and they're helping you get in shape over the holidays. Tis the season for many to overindulge. We see a lot of people kind of falling off their nutrition plans and their exercise routines. So three local fitness experts are sharing some advice. I think it's important to push beyond what you're used to. Personal trainer Zachary Rodriguez gives us some easy leg exercises. They're gonna target your entire legs. Air squats. A reverse lunge and a forward lunge. So you're going to get more bang for your buck whenever you're performing these movements. I had taken three years off of my lifestyle, my active lifestyle, and I had my baby, had back surgery, so I actually gained a lot of weight. Now coach Kristen Peterson is 20 pounds lighter. I feel like I have more energy, like I just feel better every day. To make you better, her focus, abs. The core exercises that I'm gonna show you are gonna be the plank feet twist. This mom also suggests a reverse crunch and a bicycle for that core. I think the most popular thing you're gonna do for arms is push-ups. F45 studio manager Whitney Estes with arm exercises. You can also just hold a plank either from your hands or your elbows. And then another thing we like to do um, is a straight arm plank and we like to do shoulder taps or hand taps. Bottom line, balance is key especially during the holidays. When you feel good about yourself, you're just, you're happier. Remember, your eating habits also play a big role in your journey to a healthy lifestyle. See how One Basin School is coming together to support and uplift a local teacher and her son. For me, it's a big deal because we grew up, you know, in that kind of environment. We don't have certain things. Hear from an Odessa attorney who uses his tough childhood as motivation to pay it forward. And how much longer Starbright Village will light up in the basin with the holiday spirit? Those stories just ahead and be our change. Obviously the kids miss Miss McLemore, but they completely understand that right now she needs to be with her family, she needs to be with her son. Um, while he deals with those issues. Students and staff at Travis Elementary in Odessa showing lots of compassion to a beloved teacher's son. Our Marco Ramirez shows us how they're making a difference. Iron Man has an electronic heart, right? Well, think of this as my electronic heart. For his entire life, Nico McLemore has been battling through a heart defect, and these few months have been the most challenging. His mother, Shanna Kay, is a teacher at Travis Elementary and has spent months out of the classroom to care for her son. But even though Malcolm Moore is not with their students and colleagues, they are still showing their love. 
So the whole staff has just rallied around her and sent thoughts, sent prayers, sent cards, sent gift cards to Ms. McLemore and told her the number one thing that she needed to take care of was her 18-year-old son, Nico. Throughout the day, students got to hear about Nico's story. And since today is his birthday, students not only in McLemore's class, but throughout the school, honor Nico with messages of love and hope. Rallying together, we realized we needed this day maybe more than Nico needed this day because it has brought us together. We're not thinking about COVID today. We're not thinking about people in the hospital today. We're thinking about healthy hearts and getting out and being healthy. And while all the students have been sending support to their beloved Mrs. Macklemore, so have the other teachers. It's just amazing for me to see how the whole staff, the whole team has come together to really um, make sure that Ms. Macklemore is taken care of. We have teachers that have donated their sick time for Ms. McLemore so she's able to be home with her family and not go, you know, the whole time without a paycheck. Ms. McLemore says this year has been difficult for her family, but seeing all this support has made fighting this battle a little easier. It's working. He's getting stronger and so we're just hoping he continues to get stronger and I will be able to come back. A local attorney goes above and beyond to help others. Israel Medina is a well-known attorney in the Permian Basin and even owns his own law firm. The Odessa resident works to make sure families in need have a nice Christmas. I know what it was like to come back after the Christmas break and all the kids are talking about, I didn't have, you know, you know, I got this for Christmas or what did you get? And, you know, kind of being that the outsider, right? You're the outlier. I didn't get anything. You don't talk about it. Medina was born and raised in Odessa. Friends of a local doctor say she cares for others like they were her own family. Jacob Sloan highlights this amazing woman. The hospital recognized that we didn't have enough masks to continue to do surgery at the same rate that we did. When COVID-19 made its way into West Texas, Dr. Faye Armstrong Papp at Medical Center Hospital knew she had the ability to make a difference. I had made masks for a nurse who was allergic to the paper masks. As she began sewing masks, she saw how big the need was in our community. Dr. Armstrong um, planted the seed and that seed has um, grown into a beautiful crop. What started as a one-woman operation turned into more than 500 West Texans all making masks. They talked to each other through a Facebook group. What a great um, experience it was to have all these people working together, uh, taking care of each other, taking care of the community. Eventually, the group Masks for Medics was providing PPE for law enforcement, nursing homes, and other medical professionals in Odessa. And although Dr. Armstrong led the charge, she says that the credit goes to all of those who lended a helping hand. But please don't forget the hundreds of people who were uh, working hand in hand with me to take care of the community. It's what I love about West Texas. We take care of each other and, and we do it in a special way that you just don't see anywhere else on earth. Every December for the last 33 years, the lights and wonder of Starbright Village has brought joy to its residents. The city of Odessa hopes in this holiday season, it can bring a bit of hope. I think this year is gonna be appreciated even that much more because of the difficulties that we've had to experience through 2020. We've got a beautiful display, something to be proud of and for everybody to enjoy. Hopefully there'll be a, a better 2021. Starbright Village will be open every night from 6 p.m. to 11 p.m. until January 1st. Thanks for joining us for our last VR change of 2020. We know it's been a difficult year with coronavirus. Our hope you're even more inspired and positive after these amazing stories.